Dr. Michael Lenz here, coming to you, to you today to give a talk on what about heart disease? What do I need to be concerned about and what can I do about it? I'm practicing as a clinical lipidologist and a specialist in the management of complex lipid problems with the idea of preventing a buildup of plaque in the arteries, the underlying problem in the majority of heart disease. I'm also a pediatrician and an internal medicine physician. I practice in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin here, and the number you can see is 569-2424. So, what, which of the following patients has the highest risk for heart disease? Joe, who has cholesterol of 250, Jim, who has a cholesterol of 200, or John, who has a cholesterol of 150? Well, when we think about this, our first reaction, of course, the higher the cholesterol, the more risk you're at. And we know when we're looking at populations of people, that is a good predictor. We look at general populations, but on an individual risk level, we know that the total cholesterol can sometimes overestimate somebody's actual risk. And a cholesterol of 150 can actually underestimate somebody's risk. I recently had two patients that saw me in consultation who prior to their cardiovascular event, they had had a cholesterol of 150. So the correct answer is, I don't know, we need to look further. Heart disease, is it inevitable? Is it preventable? Or I don't know. Well, of course it's preventable and that's why I'm talking about things today. Um, and we'll get a chance to go over that in much more detail. Everybody's heard of Dr. Seuss? Well, I can look at maybe what Dr. Seuss would say about heart disease or actually what I say about heart disease. Um, Dr. Lenz and heart disease, I do not like heart disease in your 30s. I do not want you to have a stent in your 40s. I do not want you to have a heart attack in your 50s. I do not like you to have bypass surgery in your 60s or 70s. I do not want it here or there. I don't want it anywhere. If you could prevent an attack, wouldn't you want to know? If you too would not like to have a stent or bypass surgery, let's find out some more. How it is you and I can prevent what happens to at least half of us if unchecked. Let's find out some more. Heart disease is, it's controllable. We can control heart disease. It's also stoppable. We can stop the buildup of plaque in the arteries. And what's even more exciting is, we have many studies showing now that we can actually reverse the buildup of plaque in the arteries or heart disease. So, let's look at the story of Fred. Fred is a 33-year-old man. He's not overweight. He exercises about three days a week. He eats a healthy diet. He has a normal blood pressure. He doesn't smoke. He has no medical problems, and he feels great. Fred has a total cholesterol of 169. Fred has plaque in his arteries. Why? Well, we'll talk about this later, um, but let's, let's get you thinking about some things. Heart disease. Detection. Assessment, action, and hope. Well, first we detect heart disease. What we're looking at, the tools we can use to try to figure out if you're at risk for heart disease, if you already have plaque buildup in your heart. Just like a radar trying to find out if there's problems or enemies lurking in the distance where we can't see, this is what we're using, looking at the tools we can use. So we'll talk more about that. Assessment, how much risk am I at? Am I at any risk for heart disease or do I already have heart disease and have to be treated very aggressively? That's one thing we'll be able to learn about. And then action, can we fix it? And as Bob Bilba says, yes we can. And that's what's exciting about the stage of heart disease treatment now. Heart disease is a silent killer. There's no symptoms most of the time until the first heart event such as a heart attack or stroke. Most of medicine is dealing with the symptoms. You know you are sick because you feel bad. Well, not with heart disease. So, we'll have to uh, deal with that and, and try to figure out ways we can figure out if you're at risk for heart disease. Heart disease is decades in the making. The heart attack occurs in somebody at age 50, probably started in their teens. We know that there's already plaque buildup in people in their teens and 20s by different studies. Uh, buildup of plaque in the arteries, there's unhealthy lining of the arteries, and we're talking about stress on the heart, blood pressure, and other factors. So we'll talk more about that. How do we get heart disease? Well, first we're looking at cholesterol. It's made by every cell in our body. It's basically building block for all the steroid hormones. 
it is essential to vital functioning. Without cholesterol, we could not survive. But it's the imbalance of cholesterol that leads to plaque buildup in the arteries. And when we look at this, there are these LDL, low-dense lipo, low lipoprotein particles, that, give it, that carry the bad cholesterol. Because cholesterol is a fat and your blood's mainly water, your body can't dissolve the cholesterol in the blood. So your body makes proteins that wrap around the cholesterol, then are able to dissolve the cholesterol. Now the LDLC that most of you have seen on your uh, lip, traditional lipid panel looks in and sense the total amount of cholesterol being carried. Well, it turns out that the cholesterol can be carried in different sizes, and we'll explain that in a second. Then there's also HDL. Um, which is a high density lipoprotein. If you have more of the HDL, it's protective. It does a lot of good things. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. It's anti inflammatory, removes excess cholesterol from lining of the arteries. It's an anti arrhythmic, most likely. It does a lot of good things, and most of the time, when you have a lot of the HDL, it lowers your risk of developing heart disease. Looking at LDL, talking about those particles, we're going to talk about unhealthy lining of the artery, inflammation, plaque rupture, the first event in a heart attack occurring, and then clot formation, the arteries block, heart of brain becomes injured. So understanding this, we have the particles flowing through our bloodstream. This patient A here has a cholesterol LDL of 100. Patient B has the same LDL of 100. When you look at, though, the scales, they're carrying the exact same amount of cholesterol. Turns out, though, that patient B has a lot more of the particles. The more particles means that there's more of these can pass through the lining of the artery and lead to plaque buildup in the lining of the arteries. Unhealthy lining of the artery get inflammation. These white blood cells go and they're to fight off germs, but they also gobble up these oxidized LDL particles containing the cholesterol. That's good in a sense, but then what happens is they get swollen with these. If there's not enough HDL to get rid of them, there over time develops plaque in the in the artery. What happens then is you'll get inflammation in the lining of the artery. Over, and we can measure that inflammation by a couple of blood tests. One's called the HSCRP, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and an LPPLAT, also LPPLA2, also known as a plaque. It's an enzyme that is also elevated with inflammation. What happens then in a, is that you can have all this plaque buildup. Here's a picture it's looking at you can have a heart cath done where the heart cath is actually essentially normal. Minimal blockage, you may even say. But what happens is that the, when you're first forming plaque, the artery actually, put the cholesterol and the plaque forms, pushes the artery out to the outside of the artery. So the lumen, or the center of the artery, actually isn't even that significantly narrowed initially. Over time, though, it can develop some narrowing. But what actually happens in the heart attack is this. You have this plaque, you see the blood going through, then you have inflammation. That plaque ruptures. That then triggers a clotting cascade to occur. All of the, the proteins that are kind of on the pause, so to speak, they get turned on. That, over minutes, can form a clot. That's the same process that occurs if you cut your finger. That's great if you cut your finger, you want to stop bleeding, but if you form a clot blocking a vital artery to your brain or your um, heart, the cells can start to get injured, and that's what we call a heart attack. So you got LDL particles, unhealthy lining of the artery, inflammation, plaque rupture, clot formation, arteries block, heart or brain becomes injured. That's what we're trying to prevent. So where and who is at risk for getting this? Well, a lot of people are at risk for this. Two-thirds of men will develop heart disease, and half of men will die from it, but half of women will also develop um, and die from cardiovascular disease. Major risk factors, we look at blood pressure, diabetes, age, family history, smoking, being inactive, having a high amount of the total cholesterol and a low amount of the good cholesterol are risk factors. But here's the thing, the majority of people who actually go to the hospital have none or only one of these risk factors. Majority of people who have a heart event or a stroke have cholesterol, the LDLC cholesterol, less than 130 half of a total cholesterol less than 200. So the traditional lipid panel can identify roughly half or give us a good starting point, but they don't identify everybody. Fortunately, we have other tools we can use.